Welcome back everybody. After a long break, we continue the videos about Apache Ozone. And today we will talk about the security, especially about the CA authority in Ozone. So usually this was my second slide, which is a standard advertisement that Apache Ozone is this one, but we can see that this is out of date. It's not valid anymore because in the meantime, uh, Apache Hadoop Ozone, which was a Hadoop subproject, moved to a top-level Apache project by the Apache board. So if you are interested about any information about Ozone, from now please check the ozone.apache.org site instead of the uh, uh, Hadoop site. But let's talk about the security. When we are talking about the security of the RPC calls, then we should differentiate between the server-to-server -server calls and the client-to-server calls, because they are different. We, we can have different requirements. And in Ozone, we have two type of RPC, mainly the Hadoop RPC and the gRPC, which are used. So we should have four answers about the security on the RPC level. So Hadoop RPC can support any kind of Kerberos authentication or token-based authentication. On the other hand, gRPC, the easiest way is just turn on mutual TLS when the server-to-server -server communication can be secured, or we can implement any token-based authentication on the application level. We can just add the token field and, and check what we would like to do. In the Hadoop RPC, the token is nothing more just than information and secret. And secret can be anything. So it can be shared secret, for example. So if I send an information to you and I put a secret at the end, which are shared only between us, nobody else can know it, then you can trust that my information is valid and can be trusted and, and, and fine. The only problem is that this secret should be sent to you at the beginning, which is not so safe. So it can be better to send only a public key to you. And in that case, if I sign the message with my private key, you can check if it's valid or not. And this is how Ozone block tokens uh, work. So why is it so important? Why do we need token at all? Well, the base problem that we have two different uh, layers. First, the metadata are stored in the central leader servers, the Ozone Manager and Storage Container Manager. If I would like to read a key, volume one, bucket one, key one, for example, then the Ozone Manager can check my credentials or authentication information and can decide if I can read it or not. But after that, I will have an information to read the raw data from some of the data nodes. How can the data node decide if I can read the block or not? There is nothing more information, just a very low level block. So to solve this, the Ozone Manager or Storage Container Manager can issue tokens. And if somebody this would like to read the real data, the data node should uh, check the token. And in Ozone, this token is signed which means that we need public and private keys mainly everywhere. So in all of the services, we have a separated public and private key, and they are signed by the storage container manager, which means that the storage container manager is some kind of uh, authority server. And it's very good because in that case, we can use it for the mutual TLS in the gRPC. And, and we use it. And it also can be used for this custom token. So if there is a message which also contains a signature, it can be checked if this signature is uh, signed with a good key. But let's check how does it work in, in a real Ozone cluster. So this is an Ozone installation 
I built it from the source, but you can have exactly the same if you download the Ozone, the same directories. And I'm just going to the Ozone Secure Cluster, and I already started the Secure Cluster with Docker Compose. If you didn't start it yet, you can do a Docker Compose up, and you will have the same cluster. You can see that I have the standard data node, SCM, OM components, and I have KDC, which is the Kerberos server, and KMS, which is a Hadoop KMS server. So let's check what's inside the, the SCM. So if I go to the SCM, all of the data is stored in this data directory, which is configured. And we have these files. So these are the local data, all of the information about the location of the data and so on. And we have CA. Okay, what is in the CA directory? So it seems that we have a public key and private key. I mentioned that every service has the same. And I have a certificate. Okay, what is this certificate? Let's check it. And we can say that this is certificate and just print out. So this is the certificate, which means that it's a public key, which is signed by somebody else. So it seems to be the public key of the CM, which is signed by the CM itself. So it's a, a self-signed certificate, but it's fine. This is the main certificate of the full Ozone server. So let's go to the Ozone Manager. Ozone Manager communicates to, with the SCM. And let's check what do we have here. Okay, we have some ratis because it's uh, HA, so we need consensus, some metrics, okay, the same at local metadata, and we also have certificate. So we have the certificate of the, so the this is the main certificate of the ozone cluster. So we can just try to check again, and it's supposed to be exactly the same certificate of the uh, SCM. So let's check it and scroll up. Yes, this is the self-signed certificate of the SCM. And let's check what do we ask. We have another certificate. What is this? Okay, let's check it again. So this is certificate and this name. And let's check what is this. So this is still signed by the SCM and the validity, oh, this is the Ozone Manager public key signed by the SCM. So it, I can prove that this is a real Ozone Manager and, and you can sign, uh, you can trust in any message which is signed by this public key because I can prove that the SCM is already trusted in this OM. And if I go to the data nodes, I think I started just one data node here data node, uh, check here the files. I have exactly the same structure, a local, private and public key, the global certificate authority, which can be used to, to check any signature. And I have a local certificate, which means that when I started data node, this data node connected to the SCM and asked to sign this certificate. And after it's signed, I can prove that this is a good public and private key. Everybody can trust it because the SCM already trusted and signed my public key. So let's check it just to be sure. Oh, open SSH. Oh, usually you don't have the open SSH command by default. And I didn't install it yet, so you can just do open as you install open SSL if you would like to do the same. Yes, this is okay. And now we can check it. Yeah, we have the certificate. And let's check what is this. Yeah, this is root something. So this is data node specific. So we don't have a OM role. We have multiple data nodes here. And again, it's signed by the SCM and I have this public key. So if you see any message from which is signed with this public key, it can be can be 
trusted. Uh, okay, let's go back to the slides. So, but what we really have is a block token, which is uh, uh, signed and signed by the SCM and, and data node can check it, the, the signature, if it's really signed by the, the SCM. Okay, that's about the certificates and public key and private key. And in the next video, we can take a closer look to the block tokens or delegation tokens.